start with, I would love if you guys could give a little brief background on yourselves as filmmakers, and, um, and then your first foray, foray into music video, mm. which for two of you are videos that I program at the LA Film Festival. <laughs> so please, I'm just like feeding you that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on. Dan, um, so my name's Dan Kwan. Um, I am a, in a directing duo. Usually there's another Daniel here, but he's uh, in Atlanta. I don't know where he is. He's, he's in Boston. He's in Boston. Well, you yeah. know better than <laughs> I do. Wow. I always know where Daniel's at. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, and I, uh, we started whew, nine years ago. Man, we've been doing this for a while. <laughs> um, and uh, it was kind of like a fluke. He, was, he graduated before I did. And he was like, look, I'm bored. I hate my job. Let's make a music video for fun. Um, so we just made a music video. We didn't even really ask the band for permission. Uh, we put in our own money. We just kind of edited it every night after work. I don't know, just kickstarted our careers. And it's like, OK, I guess we're going to do music videos now. And so like, it's, been, it's been a really like, fruitful and, and uh, fulfilling career. But like, it was, it's like nothing has been planned. It's always been just like, OK, what do we do next? What are we going to do next? And there, there's something really great about music videos because there are no you know, technically there are mm -hmm. no gatekeepers. It is very much just like, if you put something online and people like it, you're gonna get noticed. It, it's, it's been very good for people like us who had no connections in the industry and like really are bad at networking. The worst part of the industry is just trying to get your name out there. And just the fact that we could just like put our work out there and just like not talk to people was like, <laughs> oh, it, the video was, um, it was for an Icelandic band called FM Belfast. Um, and As it, you will. Yes. Yeah, I love that, that video, by yeah, the way. Thank you. <laughs> to, to this day. <laughs> um, and uh, it's called Underwear, and uh, it features me and Daniel in our underwear. So, yeah. so bonus. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, did that answer your question? Yeah, kind of? and okay. you led to underwear all on your own, so yeah. <laughs> with Hero's help, yes. Yeah. Emily. Um, I, I graduated uh, from art school, and I moved to Montreal um, pretty broke and jaded from like the gallery world, knowing that that's not something I was like, you know, aspired to try to access any longer. So I just sort of moved into a, <coughs> a, a loft collective um, with a bunch of musicians um, in Montreal because it was a place that we could pay our rent by um, putting on live shows on the weekend with local musicians. So it was a massive square foot loft that um, I think we paid $1,200 rent. Canadian dollar. Nice. Um, that was easy to to pay off with like five dollar door fee. Anyway, so Grimes was one of our um, friends, neighborhood local friends, and she played her first show at our uh, venue. I just uh, was looking for a creative outlet um, that could, because people were jamming around me and I wasn't a musician, so I was like, how can I use my skill set in this environment? and I was like, potentially, um, I could put on some performances uh, to go along with the music. So I would cast my friends as actors in these like bizarre performance art pieces. And then I started filming those. And then I was like, holy shit, this is insane. You can like edit the performance and make it and change the order. Um, so I, Claire, I begged to to make her video. Very similar story. I, I went to film school at USC. And you know, I think a lot of a lot of kids who were coming out of film school, I had no idea what I was going to do. You know, I I, uh, I think I was a little burnt out on film school, them just just like the stuffy air of it. You know, and, and my buddy who uh, was a music video director named Ace Norton, uh, he had just dropped out of school and started making these you know super low budget kind of stop motiony like kind of Michelle Gondry-y uh, uh, music videos, and he hired me to shoot them. Um, and so that's kind of how I ended up in that world. But it was also, you know, it, it was something that I was kind of missing in film school that I, I found in music videos, which is kind of, it was very intuitive and very like fun-loving and communal and, you know, there was, it, you know, especially, at, you know, in LA, film school has this like, you know, it's an industry school and it has kind of this like, air to it that it just didn't gel with me. And then music videos felt like exactly what I was looking for, which is sort of like very just kind of small and collaborative and communal. And, and so I kind of fell in love with it. Uh, and so in the beginning, I was doing a lot of um, DPing. I was just trying to figure out ways to kind of pay rent, you know? Um, and then eventually, 
Danielle uh, Hind, who uh, was a rep at Partisan at the time, who is now the EP of the company I'm with, Doomsday, uh, she threw me a couple of tracks for like $500. Um, like that's which, total budget. All, all you know, favor crew. Pretty much like my, you know, my editor is was my freshman year roommate, and my AD was uh, my AD was this guy David Gelb, who became the director of Jiro Dreams of Sushi. You know, uh, it just it was just like a weird collection of just pe hodgepodge of people that were willing to help out, and and that kind of you know got got some traction online, and it was very it was like two thousand. Eight, I guess. Mm. So little by little, it was just you know just built built a very bizarre career out of music videos. So the the through line is is it's a complete accident for all of us, right? The <laughs> is also yeah. choose your roommates. Wisely. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's really true, though. <laughs> don't live by yourself and don't live with non-artists, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I definitely want to dig more into the art side of it because that's what truly interests me. But like I mentioned, I do think it could be helpful for um, people when you first get into music video on a professional level. And I say prof they, it, it all goes, th most of it goes through the professional pipeline, even if it is a tiny like $2,000 budget video. Um, and it's such a specific beast, how it's shaped. So I think if people aren't in that, when they find out mm. about how music videos are awarded, like sometimes it's because you have you know an artist or you've collaborated with them before and then it's great, then you're like building on something. But the, the most common, or maybe not most common, but the sort of traditional pathway is that directors are um, repped by someone, and there's someone at labels that used to be called the video commissioner, and all their <laughs> titles have changed now. Um, and they're asking people to write um, treatments or concepts um, on a music video track. So they'll get like the track, maybe an idea of what the budget is, um, maybe a creative brief that says like, we, anything you want, it just has to be by a waterfall. Like, just something <laughs> stupid and outlandish. And then also something you've all, I'm sure, dealt with, but like, also you can have the artist for two hours on this Sunday, <laughs> and then um, a half hour for, like, just some absurd thing that you have to work around. But they yeah. need to look better than they've ever looked, so. Um, for $500. For $500, yeah. <laughs> yes. Everyone then, for free, will write all of these incredible treatments. And it's all like, you were saying, it is sort of an artist medium because directors by and large are coming up inspired by the song, like here's the concept, I would love to do this video. And they'll create a beautiful treatment for it, um, and then it will go through the process and they'll either hear about it, or they won't hear about it. Um, <laughs> most likely they just will never hear feedback. And then it'll get kind of winnowed down, they might get notes, and then it'll eventually be awarded. And then it's a very quick turnaround time from there. Oh, yeah. Is there anything about that part of it you guys want to chime in on? Or? You mean just the pitching process? The, the pitching yeah. process. Um, how many of you guys are getting into music videos or, or want to get into music videos? Like, I, don't, I just want to make sure we're not talking shop for no reason. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> it's a shop class. Yeah, this is a shop <laughs> class. Let's do it. Okay, let's get real boring and, and talk about numbers. Which and stuff just like for that. a little. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, when I was in school, one of the things I would do just to make money on the side was do online uh, commercial contests. Do you guys have, have you guys ever done any of those? There's like so many of them online. You like pitch. You're, you're writing these things or making videos against like like hundreds of other people. Um, and every now and then, maybe you might win like 50 bucks or a gift card to Best Buy, whatever. Uh, that's what music videos feel like. It feels like <laughs> <laughs> when you I first. Really was like, oh, and you learned so much doing that. I did. I learned how I learned how to lose a lot of jobs. I learned how to like uh, like make sure my expectations were like low. But it really does. When you first start off in music videos, you are pitching against uh, the other 150 people who are your age, who have similar taste, who's you know trying to figure out their own style, but ha haven't really found it yet. Um, and the first the first year is pretty demoralizing. Like I don't know how many jobs you lost your first years, but it was it's it's pretty tough and and uh, really hard to navigate because no one, there are no resources. Like, this is really cool that you guys can like come here and, and listen to people and, and, and like actually hopefully take something back home uh, with it. But we, we I, I didn't have much of that when I was joining the music video industry. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think now that, now that like I understand how it works, I think it's like, I really hope that the next generation will have it better because because it, it is it's it's hard. You <laughs> you don't get paid for the idea. You come up with this like really elaborate, beautiful treatment with 
pictures, and you break down what's going to look like, what's going to feel like, why it works for the song, and you're going to break down a budget. You, you throw it out into this this like dump hole, and you like hope someone even looks at it. But because you're a nobody, they won't look at it. They'll look at Michelle Gondry's treatment, not yours, and then you don't hear back from anyone. And it's like it's like that for the first you know. Um, first year about, I'm sorry if that sounds really depressing, but... Uh, you should talk about, we make music videos a little bit. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> so because, because, it's, because this process is so hard and so complicated and convoluted, um, I, I've started an organization called We Direct Music Videos, specifically like community-based organization to help uh, directors connect with each other and just like give each other advice. Because just honestly, it's just one conversation with another music video director will save you like hours and hours over the or course of the, like a couple of years, just because you you you'll understand that there are certain pitfalls that you should avoid. There are certain things that you should be able to ask for. Like one of the things that I didn't realize you could ask for is like how many other people are pitching on this. If it's a pool of five, great. I'm going to put my heart into this thing. Pool of a hundred. I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going to write another song because this song is like, I don't know if it's good enough. I don't know if I'm, I'm, I have, I'm going to be able to stick out. Talking to other directors will help you navigate that system better. And so I created this organization specifically to um, create a community and then also start to fight for standardization. Like there's no communication amongst everyone. Like it, it is kind of the wild west, which is why it's amazing. Like because it's the wild, wild west, like idiots like us can accidentally become very successful in it. And that's amazing. And we should, we should fight to preserve that. But I do think right now, the, um, you, the, there are two outcomes of being in the music video, in, video industry. You either uh, succeed out, you either climb out, or you fail out. And most people fail out. Like, we're really lucky that we were able to stand out but like, um, and, and move into other things. You know, TV, you're, you're doing the festival circuit. I got, I got to do a film. That's amazing. But like, the percentage of music video directors who can actually do that and actually make it through this machine is, is pretty rare. Um, and I just want to create, like, basically through redirect music video, create a, a safer place for newer voices, but then also hopefully create a pipeline towards something better, something that will actually be sustainable. Because you can't you can't make a living off of music videos unless you're, you know, there's like three there's like three or four directors who can like really yes, live Dave off Myers of it. Dave Myers is still doing exactly. Well. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so long answer, but no, it's good. <laughs> you, I like said it there, and then you just like. You, you basketball turf. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Over. <laughs> um, but Emily, actually, Emily, Emily wrote about this like a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. Emily wrote an, an amazing article about this, and you can you can talk about it a little bit more. Or, or didn't you? It was. I mean. It was probably an interview. Oh, maybe it was an interview. Okay, I remember. I remember you being one of the first people to be like, "Hey, this industry is crazy." Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I've always, I, I personally burned out directing music videos. Like I, I, uh, I was one of the burnouts. I, That's not true. That's not true. I don't think you have. I haven't, made, <laughs> I haven't made a video in four years, five years, because I think I got to a point where. Well, first of all, I, I went in really hard, and I did, like, at my peak, I did, like, eight or, or ten in a year. And then I, and then I, what, I, you, I didn't make one dollar off a music video. I think I made, oh, yeah, that, that's what, I, okay, now I remember that. Yeah, I, that's good. <laughs> I, I got paid on one, oh, one video I made $300 on, which Woo! is Grimes' video, because I took, I just wrote that into, like, like, her budget was just, like, I was, like, I need to pay my rent, so I'm going to Yeah, get that money. <laughs> And otherwise, and any money that like, like for any of the other videos, I um, we were like so in debt with like wanting to shoot on film that I was just like I forfeit my rate, I forfeit my rate like every time. So I could have probably, if I didn't shoot on film, like take a a little cut of that, like a sliver of it. But the budgets are ridiculously low for for if you want to have like your an idea realized fully and to mm. its best, like. It's a bit of a martyr system. Like you do have to like bleed for it for your work and or not. martyr system's the saddest. Thing. <laughs> you have to like forfeit. Yeah, like I, I don't. I the only money I've ever made as a filmmaker is in commercial directing, unfortunately. Yeah. But which I was able to get representation from my music video reel. Yeah. Um, so I did like, and I still that's still how I like, and I do like one for, you know, some. Horrible corporation, and then I and then I get money to pay my rent to live to fund my own pro projects. Or I started in 1999 at Propaganda Films as an intern, and um, you guys probably weren't alive then. But <laughs> Propaganda was insane because it was 
Danielle knows what I'm talking about, because it was like Mark Romanek was down the hall from David Fincher, was down the hall from Spike Jones, and you're like, yo, whatever, does someone need coffee? Like, <laughs> you didn't really think about it. But there's been similar things in the sense of the positives that can come of that trajectory, like the names I just said, Michelle Gondry was mm -hmm. kind of in that class. Also in the 90s when it was like... And there was big money, like crazy money. million dollar about, budgets. Like, like, yeah. And you're just like, oh no. You're like, of course those like iconic videos yeah. are, are so iconic because they had yeah. million dollar budgets. Yeah. Like that's a thing, that's, yeah. I don't know any like, other than, I can't think of like Beyonce maybe has like high big budget. No one has budget. Yeah. But, but nine million. No. But there yeah. used to be a lot of them, but it still was somewhere that there was talent breaking that moved into narratives and those are names you know, mm -hmm. most likely because of the narratives. And so I think music video has always been a great place for some people to break through for artist development and it's part of the trade-off of all of this mm. is well on one hand you're not going to make any money and you're going to be exhausted mm -hmm. yeah. on the other hand you do have some more creative control and if it's something that like happens to click um, people are always impressed by like oh you made an arcade fire i love them i love that you know, like, <laughs> there's something about that and you're like great yeah i got super rich off that so you have to make my rate now for instance short films no financing like, impossible to find financing like unless grants or like some wealthy person willing to give you money or i don't know how you find money for short films <laughs> features there's a, a lot more opportunity to find financing for your feature but like um but if you have a little morsel of an idea and you want to realize it quickly and potentially in two weeks, music videos like it, it will give you a decent like budget to make a small idea fast. Like so you, like, and I don't know how else you can realize an idea that you like thought of that morning, wrote the treatment that afternoon, and then two weeks you can visually like you're editing it. Yeah. It's there, and like I that that was like pure magic. Like yeah, uh, I feel like music videos are like the best breeding ground for style because I, I found my style just because I had to like in order to stand out in order to make things really quick you just start relying on certain things and then your style just slowly like you started like yeah, you know exactly exactly right exactly but we didn't have that style before we started music videos they just came out of the the process the the sanding away of having to just grind out idea after idea and making sure that um, we, what we call it uh, the Daniels uh, theories we, well, we, we call it uh, idea proof or no uh, Com compromise proof, an idea that's compromise proof. Because there's so much stuff that can like basically like get caught up in the system. Like the, the commissioner doesn't like this thing, the artist doesn't want you to do this thing or whatever. So we create ideas that like, no matter what they change, the core idea is what it is. Like, you know, it, it's a, <laughs> I it's love a it. the band. He's falling through the roof. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. and he's got, he's, got, he's got a dick, and it's moving around. You can't change that. Yeah, like, if you change that, you lose the whole video. And so we create these ideas, and because, because of the way that the system works, we just end up trying to one up ourselves and, and kind of find that thing that would be the thing that would not be uh, would be unalterable mm -hmm. and in that process we found our style yeah the nugget that that would be uh, that would make sure that we would not be like just disappear so in the pile of treatments always yeah I mean well we lost so many jobs because we, we'd be like Oh hi, blonde redhead! You want one our stupid video about penguins? I was just gonna say, <laughs> the penguin one is my favorite. It's dumb. It's 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 about penguin. Penguins are monogamous, and uh, I, don't, I won't get into it. But blonde redhead didn't like the idea. Blonde red, yeah, exactly. But so we, we lost so many jobs because we we were, we were realizing that like we did one job where we compromised, and we're like, okay, we'll do what the artist wants. And it's clearly, like, easily the worst video we've ever done. And one of the worst things I've ever made, probably. And from then on, I was like, I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. Kira, would you say that you found your style through music videos? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, 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 this is weirdly turning into, like, a cautionary tale about music video industry. <laughs> but I don't want it to be that way. Yeah, uh, yeah, because yeah. there's a, a lot of amazing things about it. And like I said, like, I, I think a lot of what I learned about filmmaking, even in narrative uh, stuff, all came from music videos. And there's nothing like actually making something to learn what you like yeah. and what you want to, you know, communicate. It was better right? than film school for me, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I learned more from music videos than I did from film school. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, but, but yeah, it's um, <laughs> but it's hard, you know. And, and I, I think it's hard to also stick to your guns, you know, and, and be like, oh, this is what I like, even though it's a you know commercial medium and you're working with you know a musician who is it's his or her own entity and they have their own artistic sort of uh, goals, you know, so it's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a series of like negotiations too, you know, because obviously I want to do what I want to do, but I also want 
to make sure that that works for this other artist. I don't. I care less about labels and, and you know the corporations uh, uh, involved. But you know, it's at the end of the day, a music video is a is a music driven format, right? So what I ended up doing is uh, finding musicians who kind of share the same interests as me and you know have love for film and it's not just some sort of promotional thing where they want to look hot in it for three minutes and then that's it you know they have ambitions to do something very specific in music videos um, and honestly that's pretty much the only reason I'm like I I've, the last video I did was last year and I've been doing videos since 2008 it's like I can't do math but 11 years is a long fucking time <laughs> to be doing new music videos when especially when it doesn't pay uh, and so the only way I found it to be sustainable is if you work with like-minded people and you, you know, I, luckily people I've collaborated with have, you know, gotten famous enough that we don't even <laughs> have to like ask for money from labels anymore. It's a sort of like a more of right. process, but, you know, you just got to band together with like-minded people. It's the only way to make anything, right. you know. And it always pays back dividends. Like exactly. the fact, the fact that you're you're able to now get money on music video budgets. Like, like mm -hmm. I know this is this is America. Like, or you, you, that was a pretty decent budget, right? Yeah. I mean, that's amazing that you were able to get money for that video, and it only happened because you guys were able to kind of just stick to your guns, make something that was truly you, and people kind of it kind of built off of that, and people are like, okay, let's give them money. Uh, the only reason why we were able to make Swiss Army Man, or a crazy, insane movie that should not have been funded by anyone, <laughs> was because. <laughs> Was because I turned down for what we made turn down yeah. for what, and then like the investors were like, okay, I, I, I guess I can see how this could be profitable. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it, it is no, one of those things. Yeah, so and we true. got we got paid nothing on turn down for what. That was like a tiny budget, and we just like pour, poured our hearts into it for some reason. And uh, <laughs> the art of turn down for what. Just <laughs> so passionate. Um, you know that I would teach that video if I was still teaching music video. But that's, the, I think, the, you know, especially in music videos where it is half like commercial uh, art and then half is art art. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's just, a, it's a game of Trojan horsing things, mm -hmm. right? Like you, you, you're trying to come up with an idea that is exciting for you that sort of fits through the door, yeah, door definitely. you know what I mean? And yeah. I feel like that's where the best stuff is. I find it really interesting. I love what you bring up the turn down for what because I can see in your narrative work, so obviously Dan just mentioned Swiss Army Man, which you should for sure see. Emily had an incredible, you premiered at TIFF, right, initially with Funeral for Lightning, that we also showed at LA Film Festival, and then Heroes Done Atlanta and Guava Island. I feel like I can never pronounce Guava, by the way, so. Guava. You're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like from the islands, Minnesota. But, um, <laughs> But it's funny because with all of them, I can look, and I think one of the other sort of unspoken benefits of music video, of the, the, the martyr system of music video, mm -hmm. in building your style is that it, you, what people are looking for at festivals, what people are looking for as representatives, are they're looking for a distinctive directorial voice, like an authorial voice almost. Mm -hmm. And I think music video sort of force you to hone that in a way that other, like even shorts don't necessarily do because it makes you stand out when you're pitching, when you're going through that bidding process. Like, oh, if Hero's here, I know it's gonna have this feel to it. They're, they're all different, but mm -hmm. like it's not gonna be like a sloppy skin bag. I mean, don't let me sell you short. Go make a bump <laughs> and grind video, which is like, <laughs> go with God, but you have an idea of what they'll be. And then there's also interesting things of, I can see when I watch your narrative work, like that voice imprinted on it. And I remember talking to you and Scheinert, mm -hmm. who's in Boston right now. I don't Atlanta? know if you knew that. No. Um, <laughs> about the Swiss Army Man script like well before, and mm -hmm. you mentioned like, you had basically gone through, and you also, I highly recommend, is Daniels.us still have all your shorts on it? Daniel, Daniel us. Yes. Okay, Daniel, yeah. Daniel, Daniel dot us. Yeah. I would check it out. They have some incredible <laughs> shorts um, that they also star in, so you can get more of this this right up in your, uh, <laughs> your laptop. Yeah. But um, you guys played so much all the time in doing mm -hmm. that, and I love, so with Swiss Army Man, when you were developing that, you had mentioned 
oh yeah, we just, we learned all of these ridiculous tricks. Like we did this one thing in this video and this other. And so you sort of worked them into the story. Yeah, well, I, I mean, we were just talking about how it was better than film school. And like one of the things that we would do is like every new project, we'd say, okay, not only are we, do we want to do something creatively interesting, but also technically, I want to learn something. I want to work with a stunt crew on this one. Let's, let's write something into this and so start pitching ideas that will require us to do that. Because, you know, when we, our first video, it was a, a crew of two people, me and him. The second video we did, uh, we added a DP and a production designer, maybe uh, a producer. So there's three more people. Every We're video also in the cast. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but the idea is like we we didn't know how to work with these people or these different jobs. We didn't know what their job titles exactly were. You know, in film school, we, you have the job titles, but like everyone does everything. It's just like you know whatever. Um, and so we, we slowly just added someone to the crew every single time we did another video. And if we loved them, we'd bring them back. And so everyone that was on Swiss Army Man was someone that we worked with through our careers. And it was, and it was like really, it was really fulfilling because like Swiss Army Man was a tiny budget and we wanted to do big things with it. You know, like there's bears and fire and water work and water work is the worst. And it's like, we had it up above water, we had below water, we're in the woods. It, it was just like really ambitious for like an indie film. And uh, the only way we were do, able to do it is because the whole movie was just, you know, filled with passionate people who basically believed in us, which is like, it, it's a really, um, it's a really special place to be in. And I, I know Hero is the same, because Hero actually sh shares a lot of my crew. Um, always, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's just funny because uh, our, our DP, the only person Hero will leave, uh, or the only person my DP will ditch us for is Hero. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's a little contentious. It's okay. It's funny because I always thought about you guys that way. <laughs> I didn't know that you were about me. It's fine. Um, but it, it, is, it is one of those things that you, you don't, you, you, you can't pay for that. You can't, you can't get that when you, when, if you jump into TV right away, you're, you're meeting a bunch of new people and it's like impossible um, to, yeah, it's, it's really hard to navigate it. And, and music videos really helped me kind of slowly build out my knowledge and build out my community to a place where when we finally had to, you know, make something crazy to show the world, we were ready for it. Um, what was your question? No, you got there. <laughs> it's, it was of taking the skills that you learned in music video yes, and putting yes. them in. And yeah. it's also something I just remember when Swiss Army Man came out and any of the reviews were in, I was like, have you never seen what they've done? Like, <laughs> you think a farting jet ski is <laughs> weird? Ask the man about penguins. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Emily, for um, funeral, wait, funeral for lightning. I keep getting the, the um, article, or whatever, parts <laughs> of speech. Um, <laughs> So you have some really beautiful videos that you've done, and I think you have a very recognizable style. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my favorites is Afterlife, the Arcade Fire. And in looking at it and seeing Funeral for Life, there's, to me, again, it's that idea of, oh, I can tell someone with like an empathetic eye and this uh, su suggestion of pacing and all of this. It's, it's very nice. Are there things that you, like, am I reading into it, or are there things that you felt you got from the music videos you made? That film, to me, was like a, a reaction to music videos being like, I want to make something definitely, definin definitely quiet, mm -hmm. you know, mm. without a music track at all, like, just, si just play with silence and not to have the camera move, because I was so used to, like, city cam and fast, like, camera movements and stuff, and I just wanted to, just to have, like, a locked off, like, very, like <laughs> slow burning, like two. I think for me, the pace is, feels very slow. Now I'm reacting to that, um, that short making something with like writing something with that has a lot of music in it right now. So it's funny oh. that I'm, I'm a series of reactions. <laughs> yeah. But I was just like, I'd, I'm just like so sick of editing to the beat. I'm because so, I edit all my own music videos. So I'm just like tired of. Um, just he like hearing the same track over and over again like thousands of times. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like your instincts are, are th your biggest, uh, like the, the thing you learn to, to rely on in, in this short amount of time you have to make a music video. I think that's the, the, the beautiful thing is that, that maybe takes a long time to learn as a filmmaker because you're so, it's so rare that you're actually making films because they require so much time, money, and, and people you're trying to convince always to help you with your projects or like to show up <laughs> and you're just always trying to like round up the troops and get people excited and like get people to give their all with like often not being paid so it requires like this cult leader kind of status and just like convincing people of how great <laughs> it's going to be all the time and that can be really disheartening because you're um 
yeah, because sometimes you're a little insecure and you don't know if it's going to be cool, but you have to like convince everyone it's going to be amazing. So like cheering everyone on. Um, but then I think that that so that's I guess the one thing that I feel like now um, um, I just can I just like I'm able to distill ideas quickly because I just know like my voice in like you can I don't know with the mysterious creative process you just are able to uh, hone that faster and. Art is not a language. There's there's a lot of words that can go into describing how you get to a place in your own process, but, but it's not. But I feel not... like you know when something is, you're supposed to make something, if it gets stuck in your head for days and weeks on end, and you keep thinking about one idea, and then you're like, I should probably make that because it's probably going to be, it probably wants to be made mm. because it keeps like talking to me constantly, and so I'm going to find an opportunity somehow to make that through a music video or, or in a short or something. But um, but you feel like you're being haunted by yeah. an idea, and that, mm. and you have the only way to like break the the <laughs> it follows curse or whatever <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. is to like create it. First of all, I, I spent the weekend watching both of your videos just as like a refresher, and it was kind of mind blowing just going back from like 2010 to now, and then also just seeing your kids here. I was just like, <laughs> we, <laughs> a lot of time has happened. Uh, but one thing about your work that constantly jumps out at me is like you don't force your vision on your subject or characters. It feels very much like you found. It feels very documentary driven, right? Like you. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's a casting process. I don't know if it's you finding environments through your casting. But everything feels like it just organically unfolded. Even if it you did have to recast somebody in the morning, the day of, it feels so like exploratory and real and and honest, you know what I mean? In a way that it, it that it's so hard to do, especially in music mm -hmm. video, because it is such a condensed, convoluted process. And I felt, even though the pacing and, and the, the cadence of, of the short film is very different from a music video, that voice still, like the very like empathetic, sort of observant, observant point of view felt very consistent to me. I remember when, I first, when Atlanta first came on, I was like, oh, if you had never told me you had anything to do with this, mm. I would have thought, uh, if you're going to work on this, he should sue whoever <laughs> fit his style. Mm. Because to me, it was so you. I found mm. it recognizable, but, you know, always interesting and new, but very much like your style. Mm. That said, I think your video, you've done so many, and they're so, like the St. Vincent video mm -hmm. is so different from, do you know what I mean? Like they. They don't necessarily like, oh yeah, he always does a thing with museums that have absurd <laughs> large sure, sure. women and then, you know. Um, would you say there's things as a filmmaker that you took away from music video, like as you were building your voice yeah, or absolutely. Things? I mean even even working the narratives now, I I don't know if it, if if I'm just naturally this way or because it's because I started music videos, but I find that I've found more about myself creatively just collaborating and working with different artists on different songs than I ever could just doing writing and you know what I mean just mm -hmm. producing everything on my own I think collaboration is it's part of the filmmaking process anyway just because you're working with so many people and crew and everything um, but music videos for me was <laughs> I, it was like like speed dating with artists, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then like more I meet people, I meet more, I'm just like, oh, I know what I want, yeah. you know? And then like, oh, this person's doing this thing that's a really interesting take on the yeah, subject. Exactly, who you got married to. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. I ended up marrying Donald Glover. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I think it was, it was such an important process for me because I'm, I'm not someone who, you know, who can like, uh, like draft a manifesto and execute it and force that manifesto on people, it has to be a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think music videos are very conducive to that way of working. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and Atlanta too, like if someone just came up to me and said, hey, like make this TV show and it wasn't driven out of a collaboration that I already have with Donald and you know, we'd done like eight videos at, at that point and we did a short film, you know, um, and so it, it didn't even feel like, um, it felt very natural, mm -hmm. even though at the time, uh, FX was terrified that we were gonna, you know, we made this. It doesn't this, look like anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and yeah. we made this short film uh, called Clapping for the Wrong Reasons, which was one of the first things I did with Donald, and it's a very weird sort of like, you know, esoteric, quiet, 25 minute short film and FX was so scared that we were going to make that into a TV show <laughs> which it, 
there's a little bit of that in there. <laughs> and also, you know, I hadn't done narrative, so there's a lot of uh, fear. But because I, you know, I knew that I'd worked with Donald enough times that I, that you know, we had some sort of a, uh, a chemistry, and and it, you know, I just trusted in the process. You know, so I, if I didn't have that, I don't think I would have that, that show would have worked. You know. Is there anything? I'm going to go back this way. I'm going to mm, switch it up. That's nice. So we're going to yeah, send it back. Yeah. yeah. So you're just going to keep yeah. waiting. <laughs> that's fine. Um, is there anything the, that you like? What was the biggest challenge in switching to narrative? Because obviously, I mean, there's just dumb things of like, if if you're shooting things MOS or you're playing with whatever, and you were shooting on film, which is a slightly different, mm. um, has its own yeah. bottle of thing, worms that you're trying. Bottle of worms. <laughs> <laughs> You guys know what I mean. If a lot of worms you're dealing with, don't tell Kodak. But um, is there anything that when you switched and you started, you're like, oh great, we're going to do narrative storytelling now, and mm. I feel pretty good about visuals, but now I'm, what were the biggest challenges on that side? Um, I or mean, was it just seamless? You're like, in no, season. not at all. I, <laughs> there was a lot of me, like the first week of shooting the first season of Atlanta, I remember just being like, don't let anybody know. <laughs> that I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> especially you know, because like I, you know, I know how. To, I, I was very confident that I could tell stories visually, right? Because that's what I've done for ten years, and and I know how to play where to put the camera. I know rhythm because of music videos. Even if it doesn't have music over it, I just I feel the rhythm of a scene. But I've never broken down a script before, and I've never given actors notes, you know. So that was just like I would. My worst nightmare is seeing footage of myself directing the show <laughs> for the first two weeks. Because I'm sure it's a lot of just me like sweat coming down my face and be like, oh yeah, that's probably pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's like it's something that I had to, I had to learn it, you know? And, yeah. and thankfully, another blessing of that show is, aside from me working with Donald all the time, all the actors were relatively you know, up, up and comers and you, and they were, they were kind of in the same boat mm -hmm. as well. So we were all... <laughs> kind of pretending like we knew what we're doing together, you know, which was like a really beautiful feeling. And by the end of the season, we really felt like we learned what the show was together, you know. Um, and so, you know, obviously, like, technically speaking, like blocking and staging and, and giving actors notes without, without, you know, giving them line readings and, you know, all, all <laughs> those things were new and it was a, you know, it was a conversation that, that had to be learned. Obviously. Emily, how about you? Did you have any, when switching to dialogue, and it's actually interesting because you're right, funeral is such a Super quiet piece. Yeah. So I'm like, you know when you switch to talkies, yeah. <laughs> which you mostly <laughs> did, um, but it's still different. And like you were saying, you were doing something intentionally quiet. Did you have any differences or specific challenges when you went into funeral? Um, I think the, 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 the writing process is really different because um, the like it's it's just I, I wrote like when I write a music video it's it's usually just like a beat beat sheet of or like a paragraph of an idea, and and it's just like you need only like twenty beats or something you know it's like it's super like a small <laughs> it's it's a really beautiful small idea that you, all you need is is just like one little idea and you can mm -hmm. make a great video and I think that with a with a with narrative you need. It's probably better to just make it about one thing, but you you have the all this time that you're like, oh, I want to fill it with like all these different events that are happening, and maybe it's gonna conf it confuses the plot often, and you don't need to have, but you want to fill the time with like a bunch of other ideas, and and then you have the a ton of cooks in the kitchen of like just so many ideas swimming around, and then you you don't know like you can get end up in the woods totally. I think that it's just it's just the the writing process is. Um, you have to just boil it down back to like your original idea of of, of the story you want to tell, and um, it's t it's hard when all of a sudden you're used to like three minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, max like six minutes video, and then all of a sudden you have like thirty minutes or sixty minutes to play, with, and you can just like kind of um, go a little crazy with like writing, and 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 uh, and you, you kind of lose the story, and I think that's that's the hardest thing because it's really fun to play with the. A s one song that has already has a tone baked into True. it because this the music can only um, like c it contextualizes your images com like if it's like a you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. a banger versus like a mo mo like melodic 
valid, then obviously your images are going to read off of that. So all of a sudden it's going to be like, I'm in complete control of the tone, and I'm in complete control of whatever music I want to use, or I could throw in like, you know, uh, whatever, <laughs> like, Grateful Dead song, or I could put a, like, you know, a, like, Brahms classical piece, like, it, can, it just, all of a sudden you're just like, super free, and that can be really... It's the worst. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, like, honestly, like, I think that's probably one of, I have a bunch of, like, little in the weeds things that was really hard, but to me, the biggest thing is, is you, you underestimate how much, like, the difference between five minutes and 90 minutes is, like, I'm not going to do math right now, but it's a very specific number. <laughs> and you, so, you, so you think, 85. think well, no. <laughs> I was going to do like a multiply, but yes, okay. 85. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like Subtraction. <laughs> it's, um, it's okay, math. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's only a certain number of times more. And you think, mm -hmm. okay, I'll just work on it this many more times, <laughs> and then I'll have a feature, and it'll be great. But it exponentially complicates itself and eats itself, and it, it becomes this, this completely uh, miserable process because you because in music videos I felt like by the end of it I felt like a god I was like I can just come come up with an idea smash it out it's amazing let's do another one and then you go back to yeah exactly and you go back to you go back to uh, the writing room and it's like I'm gonna write a feature and then you you feel like I forget what Kirvana gets says but you're like a one-armed hermaphrodite with a crayon in your mouth like that's I don't know if that's PC anymore but that was Vonnegut not me not me um, but he says <laughs> yes yes exactly yeah. <laughs> Kurt Vonnegut said Vonnegut that. Under the um, <laughs> but, in your face, Vonnegut. But, um, but it, it, it is 100% that you 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 feel like an uh, an idiot and an infant, and you don't know why you don't you can't process why. You have an infinite amount of time. Exactly. That's yeah. And it's that's it's really it's like whatever a great idea you had three months ago. It's totally. Like, and it, that, I love the t the yeah. deadline of the music video because you can't even second guess. You're like, eh, let's just make it. Yeah. 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 And then so you're like, I will say that is. That is one of the things that music videos trains you poorly in. It doesn't pour, It doesn't train your brain for the long, uh, the time frame of, of features in TV. Yeah, because yeah, delayed gratification is, is one of the things I was going to say. With a music video, you could pump out a music video a month if you really wanted to, and you feel great, and you you get the you get the likes, and you get the people writing it up on the articles and stuff like that. And it's it's a, it's addictive. It's very it's a, it is a beautiful high as a creative. It's probably one of the most wonderful, fulfilling things you can feel is 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 to have your work seen. And to do that on a on a regular time basis is incredible. And to, it takes a lot of. And this is one of the reasons why I think a lot of music video directors have a hard time moving into narratives. Is it takes a lot of um, it takes a lot of willpower to say no to that and say I'm going to just disappear for a couple of years and I hope people don't forget me. You know, it's, it, it it is this very strange. Yeah, it's, it is. It is this big gamble, and it's 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 very. I, I'd say that's that to me. That was like one of the weird things where like, I'm finally starting to get over that. I'm finally being like, I haven't put out anything in, in a little while, and I just, <laughs> you had, just a, had a baby. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> that helps. That definitely helps. Having a baby is way more way more gratifying than releasing a music video. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, just like really nerdy, like small whatever. Like moving into TV, we, we've done like four or five episodes of guest television, and one of the things that I was terrible at at first, and I'm starting to get really, you know, fo focusing on it and, and making sure I can flex those muscles, is just like coverage. How do you cover? Because you have no time in TV, you, like it, you're in someone else's world. You can't go too crazy, but if you go too boring, then you, it's like, why are you even doing this? <laughs> like, like anyone else could have could could have directed this episode. How do you create? How do you how do you plan out the the number of shots and angles that is efficient enough for the schedule, interesting enough that you feel fulfilled and that you put your stamp on it, but then also like. It isn't going to like ruin the aesthetic of the show, and like to me, like it's such a small thing. Like our first, one of our first TV shows that we ever guest directed on was just like, it was real. It was a really hard learning curve because they knew what they wanted, or they knew what the show was. Everyone else knows better than you, exactly. And then you just feel like the, the idiot who's getting in the way. Um, yeah, exactly. But like, I, I think now, like that's one of the things. If you ever want to be a music video director, move into TV. Like, th think about coverage. Watch TV shows you love and just see what their angles are doing and like how much do they, can they accomplish with with how few angles. So it's, it's like a nerdy, like a small thing, technical thing. Um, and then, I mean, you you covered the big one. It's just like that writing process. Just really, just it, it really cuts your cuts you down. <laughs> like yeah. it brings you back down to the bottom again. It's and then really. The edit does it. 
Oh, God, yeah. yeah. The other thing that I'd say on your behalf that I've always liked that I actually get pieces of, and you mentioned this as well, is if you are someone who wants to be making music videos, make some. There's, there's this um, a very big thing in, especially in Los Angeles, if anybody in the industry of like, oh, how do I get to a label or how do I become roommates with crimes like, um, <laughs> so I can make her video, do you know what I mean? She's not available for relationship yeah. right now. But play, like you guys, like uh, all the time, I knew where to find you and Daniel because you guys were just shooting stuff for your, for your own amusement mm. constantly, if it's a music video, if it's a short. And I think a lot of people, you get sort of like, in the blocks of, I'm going to make a short film for a festival. Look, just make a lot of things. You get better with each one. Yeah. So I think one of the other mm -hmm. things I've seen with a lot of music video directors I like is that they mm -hmm. they were just always making things at a certain level. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have any examples of videos with the budget so we can kind of go back and try to reverse engineer where like, oh. the money might have went? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take this one? Like this, yeah. Wait, so what, what are you saying? So, if any, like any videos that you did that you can remember the ballpark budget, so if they went and Googled it, mm -hmm. YouTubed mm -hmm. it? Actually, uh, I'm, I'm glad you bring this up because right now We Direct Music Videos is trying to come up with a way to figure out how to make sure that we can make sure that the budgets can go up a little bit while the expectations go down. Because right now, like, expectations are really high and budgets are tiny. People are like, $500, I want this thing to be a viral yeah. banger. Let's do this. Right. And it's really, it's impossible. It's, it's, it's a thing that, like, because there are so many passionate filmmakers, they will pour themselves into a $500 video. That's exaggerating. Let's say $5,000 video. And it'll be incredible. And then from then on, $5,000, yeah, that's, the, that's the standard. Yeah. And so we're coming up with a, with a I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a variable, a number in, in a budgeting system that will basically quantify passion, quantify our donations. I'm calling it a music video subsidy. Directors have been subsidizing the music video industry by with with our passion, with our with our crew, with our uh, locations, the favors. the favors, the equipment. These are all donations that we struggling filmmakers are giving to Sony and Columbia and Warner Brothers. So we're creating. I'm creating a system where we're going to basically have a third a third column. There's going to be a column that says standard budget. This is how much all these items should cost. Actual budget. This is how much you're, we're actually going to pay for it. Well, lots of zeros. Lots of zeros. And then over here, last column, simple subtraction, music video subsidy. <laughs> this is how much. This is how much value I am adding as a director if I, if you go with me. This mm -hmm. number is going to be disgusting. It's going to be such a big number compared to the actual video that I think we can actually leverage this number in a way, whether just within the industry or outside to the public, and say, look, even if even if we paid everyone minimum wage. There's like you like you, you like my friend said recently she had a twelve thousand dollar budget. They came up with an idea and they were able to get it down to eighteen thousand. But when they actually budgeted out how much it should have cost, it was closer to sixty. They didn't want to give them that extra six thousand dollars to get to eighteen thousand, but they said, look how much we are offering you. If you if you say no to us, you're losing fifty thousand dollars in value. Mm -hmm. Which they don't. One, one more piece of data, just because mm -hmm. I've been thinking about a lot of this because of the... No, the, we're ready. We have the, the soapbox for the you. The We Direct Music Video thing has kind of empowered me to do research and figure out the numbers and figure out what is going on. Right now, all the budgets have been going down for the past 20 years, ever since Napster. And that's fine because the music industry has been failing, right? It's, it's been kind of slowly being eaten away. Mm -hmm. Past three or four years, it's been going up again. YouTube paid out $1.8 billion to the um, record industry. $1.8 billion just for music videos. Mm -hmm. Top 100 most viewed videos on YouTube of all time, how many of them are music videos? 95. 95 of them. Yes. In the top 10, there's one video that isn't a music video. It's like a Russian animation of no, a bear. I was like, is it Charlie the no, Bear? No, no, it isn't. But but <laughs> so so not only that, YouTube is actually considered the top music streaming service of mm -hmm. everything. Ten times more streams than um, than uh, Spotify. If you look at "Shake It Off" by Taylor Swift, 2.5 billion views. You look at the same song, same exact song on Spotify, 2.5 million. You're crazy. Wow. People are underestimating how much value yeah. they're getting out of music videos because the inherent va value of music videos is advertising. So on top of the, what it's actually being made for, they're getting 1.8 billion on top of that. And I'm not saying that we deserve, who knows how much we deserve. I just want to, I think we just need to figure out what the trans, like financial transparency sure. so that we can figure out how to make this a little bit more sustainable and a little bit more humane. Because right now, no, like we did a recent poll of our community 
10% of all directors said that they got paid all the time or often. So 90% of the people said they never got paid. Wow. That's insane. It does, it's like, in, in, especially in this climate right now where people are talking about uh, workers' rights and labor unions. Sure. And obviously directors, you know, we're not the, we're, we're not the saddest. You know, like we, 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 ha we get to work and do what we love and what we're passionate about. But regardless, we do add value to the culture. The fact that you know, this, this is America became this massive cultural moment is huge. And I think people are undervaluing what, what music videos actually contribute to society. And so I, I do think that uh, we need to figure out how to get you guys the budget so you, we can all educate each other and figure out how to leverage those numbers in a way that we can actually uh, improve the industry with. Um, anyways, I think it's sorry. A <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, Hero, did you have to? No, no, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. And I think it's a communication and transparency thing, mm -hmm. too, because obviously it's a small you know, industry made up of up and coming artists. And as a gigantic corporate entity, they don't understand that they're taking advantage of young, totally. you know, just of, of, of people starving, starving artists, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they know, but they don't know to what extent, right? Yeah. Like, so for example, like how much did uh, Turn Down For What cost? Uh, that was 50,000. 50,000. Yeah. How much of your own effects uh, I mean, we did all of it. Like, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, like, I mean, the, the thing is, I we we sh we wrote it, we directed it, we edited it, we did the VFX. I performed in it. I was the main dancer. Yep. I got two thousand dollars for two months of full time work. So it's like less than three dollars an hour, maybe. Right, right. And and that video <laughs> is at eight. That your feature. It did launch my feature. Exactly. It's a trade off. It's a trade off. But that video eight. 850 million views right now. Like I, I think I, I saw, I, I calculated because Forbes has like an estimate that ad revenue somewhere between 200,000 to two million dollars. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I think it's so on the lower end, but in the like the percentage of the ad revenue should go to the directors. Yeah, that's a whole other. Thing. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. We have DJ Snake right now. <laughs> DJ Snake, DJ Snake did not like the video, guys. <laughs> he, uh, he didn't? No. He, oh, he, he, he fought it, and then finally he was like, okay, you can release it, but not on my YouTube page. Release it on Columbia Records. Uh, First day, it got like a million views. Uh, he made him take it down and put it on his, video, on his account. Uh, <laughs> uh, 